a what's up girl? <laughs> hey, how's it going? Yeah, pretty good. I would love to go to dinner tomorrow. If I am back in Night City tomorrow. No, I'm not right now. I'm out of town. I'm in Angel Shores. Yeah. Oh my god, it's beautiful here. Holy. I've only, you know, seen photos, movies, but when you're actually here, it's really vibrant and sunny. It's super nice. Yeah. Uh, just hanging out. Yeah, I'm, uh, I know a friend that lives here, so he's letting me crash at his place, which is super cool. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just was like, I had to get out. I know I pretty much was gone for a little while, came back to Night City, and now I'm on the road again. But I've never been here before, so got to take an opportunity, you know. And, uh, I don't know. Recently, I just felt like I needed time for myself. Like a proper vacation. Just been kind of hitting my head against the wall back home, to be honest. Yeah. Nah, I'm all right. No, I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I guess it's probably pretty obvious to you, but yeah, I'm not so good, I guess, if, is that what you want to hear? No, I'm not, I'm not trying to be confrontational, but I appreciate you. No, yeah, uh, look, obviously it's, you know, we've talked about it, I've talked about it to death, but, you know, like I had this connection with someone, and this very brief moment in time, and it, you know, I was once a hopeless romantic, and then kind of killed off that part of me, but there's been a resurgence of it, and you know, it was starting to feel real again. And like, I noticed that I was catching things she was saying, and, and I already had ideas spinning, like, well, I knew that she was a vegetarian. And you know me, I don't cook. I do not cook, but yet I was looking up recipes, you know, best vegetarian recipes. What could I presumably make, you know? And I was going to do like a test run to make sure I could cook it well. Because, you know, in the back of my mind, even though we hadn't got to that point yet, in the back of my mind, I was still thinking, I mean, if this goes further, I would, I would like to make her dinner, you know? And, you know, that's like what the old hopeless romantic ASMR friend would do. No, I haven't, we haven't talked since then, but, I mean, it's all good. We, we didn't end on bad terms or anything. And, you know, the fact that we do work together at the same place and, I don't know, it, it's good. It's just like, kind of, Pretend it never happened and moved on, you know? Yeah. Well, no, I haven't had to see her because I don't have to go into the office so often. Uh, although, truth be told, there were a couple times where I purposely went where I knew she was either going to be out at lunch or maybe she wasn't working. Yeah.
Well, thank you for saying that. And, uh, well, you know, it was actually interesting. My therapist pointed out that, you know, you're allowed to grieve with this. And I don't know why I never really put that word in association with, like, you know, when a couple dates didn't work out. Like, what do you even call that? You know, it's just a person that you knew that you went on the date with. But she mentioned, you know, that, yeah, as we've identified, one of my highest values is connection. And even though it was a short moment of time there was a connection made between me and this woman and now that connection is lost so I'm allowed to grieve for that that loss because you know grief doesn't have like a level you don't have to quantify it and maybe it, it's obviously not as like devastating as losing a loved one would be. But it's still a loss. So yeah, when she told me that, it was like, whoa. I I'd never, like, associated that. And it made me feel so much better about the situation. And I was looking back on, you know, girls that I've gone on dates with before where it doesn't work out. And there is this there's kind of weird shame associated with like, oh, well, it didn't work out. Oh, like, you know, as we've kind of talked about how it like paints a, a picture in your head that, well, there's something wrong with you. Or, well, I, I, I don't add up. I'm not good enough to be marked off on someone's box, you know. And those loss of connections, you know, even though now I look back on some of them, it's like I don't even feel it. But at the time, you know, they hurt. And I probably could have benefited from saying, hey, you know, it's okay to be, to mourn that loss, that to be sad for that. Because I think that recognize you know, in recognizing it, you can accept it, and then you can start the process of moving on. But, you know, it's not just with her. Like, just right now, it, the way I'm feeling, it's not, like, because of just her. It's, you know, my history of this all, and... And just where my mindset is at, you know. I don't know. I'm just... I hate feeling lost. Almost aimless. You know? Like... I never would have imagined I moved... Tonight, city. What a crazy big move. Right? And, you know, like, because I saw potential in the city and in me, you know, that I could be. Who I want to be, I could make my dreams come true, and then I realize, like, I don't know. There's, there's practical dreams, and then there's just, you know, maybe like, hey, you need to be more realistic about, about life. No, I, you know, I, I get you. I hear what you're saying. You're right, yeah, a lot of people do. And yeah, no, I know. Well, 
I, and to mom and dad's credit, you know, they always supported us like that. So, I don't know. I, I still just, that's why I've, I find that I can't go home. I don't like going home because I feel like I show up with nothing to show, you know? What am I going to show them with my delivery? Oh, look, last year I I, I delivered over 2,000 deliveries. Like, what? Who cares? You know, I wanted to do movies, I wanted to write. Well, I don't have a movie to show, I don't have a book I can give them. You have you and your boyfriend, and... You know, when we come home and I don't have anyone by my side, and it's like... It feels like a reflection of myself. Because I put value into that at a young age where... It was something I wanted, so now that I still don't have it, I feel unaccomplished in that regard as well. And you know what? No one ever talks about the guilt of that feeling. Like, I don't want to talk to mom and dad about it because I don't want to say, Oh, well, hey mom, hey dad. Here's another year where I don't have that thing I want. I know, I guess, I guess you didn't raise me right because no one seems to love me. I don't know if I've even mentioned this to you. I've talked to friends about it, but I came to recognize that there's this feeling I have inside of me that is that I'm unlovable. You know, when I was younger, I remember pretty much anyone I had a crush on, I would like ask them out. You know, it was middle school and all, but you know, I always got rejected. I never got that yes. And then I remember Lizzie, you know, the girl that I would arguably have the biggest crush on. And I never made a move, ever. Didn't even, like, throw my hat in the ring because I was so afraid of that rejection. So afraid of it and so sure that it would happen. And that no matter what I did, how I presented myself, if I changed, that no matter what I did, I wouldn't be enough for her. And not that I thought that deeply at that age. Didn't recognize that until therapy and until I got older. Where I'm like, oh, that's where that all started. So, yeah. I, I didn't mean to like throw this on to you I, okay well thank you because I it's actually nice to talk about it so thank you I don't know you know I would still I would like to still meet someone in person you know and hey my hopeless romantic side is I want to have that meet cute, you know? And I know we, that word authentic, we've thrown it around, but that is. It's like an authentic connection. And it's not to say that that couldn't be accomplished through the apps. And look, 007, never say never. So I'm, I might jump back on the apps, but... You know, for now, I'm good. I really am. Like, you know, I'm just bringing these feelings with me. This, 
it's like, yeah, kind of, some days I go through this shitty feeling of loneliness and isolation. But like, that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm out here in sunny, sunny angel shores. You know, change of scenery, change of perspective, breath of fresh air. You know, slowly kind of doing things that are a little outside of my comfort zone. Some things that might scare me a little bit. And so, yeah. In that regard, I am doing well and making strides and trying to appreciate moments. Even within the day, moments within the day, even the mundane, ordinary day, like whether it's five minutes or an hour, whatever I can find, where I can just enjoy myself, my time with whatever hobby, or even if it's just going for a walk or, you know, watching a show, putting my phone down and like trying to minimize distractions in that regard. So, it, it's all good. I'm all good. I know that we got kind of deep there, but things are good. Things are looking up. You know, I don't know what's going to happen out here, but I'm going to enjoy my time. And, you know, Maybe I start doing this more and I start building this up and inching further and further outside of my comfort zone. And, you know, maybe when I go back home, I can start making bigger strides. Thank you for calling. I really appreciate it. And sorry about dinner tomorrow, but I'll make it up to you. We'll go out another time. And, uh, yeah, I love you too.